Mr. Blues, it has come to our attention that a reviewer on YouTube, one Captain Logan of the YouTube channel Geekvolution, has made it his mission to review every superhero movie ever made. And to this point, his analyses have remained unchallenged, with the exception of fellow reviewer Miss Dare Fusion, though current information suggests these two are now working in collusion. Your mission, Mr. Blues, should you choose to accept it, is to review an entry in the series Superhero Rewind and see whether or not it is truly impenetrable. Best of luck. Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and today I'm going to be reviewing a review. Uh, this should prove interesting. It is a review for Batman Begins from YouTube channel Geekvolution, the Superhero Rewind series. If you've been watching Geekvolution's videos for a while now, or even if you've just begun to delve into them, you get an immediate sense that Captain Logan and fellow geek not nerd Vince are both intelligent, well-spoken guys with a passion for language, character study, and geeky properties. In fact, as evidenced within this very Superhero Rewind and others in the series, this is without a doubt Logan's forte. It prompts you to think about things in a light you may not have considered, or perhaps have and haven't been able to put a voice to. In the case of Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins, the film itself is a complex series of interweaving plots and character arcs framed in, as Logan suggests, a complex crime drama. He definitely takes a deep analytical look at the piece, and though he himself has said from time to time it's his opinion that he tends to overthink things, I think we get a deep read on this film and its multi-levels. In fact, one of the things that I found very impressive was the sort of familial or father figure line between Bruce Wayne, Ra's al Ghul, and Alfred. How in a sense they come to symbolize the father figure in his life that is missing after his parents are killed by Joe Chill. And how either man symbolizes contrasting viewpoints which seem to point Bruce in the direction he's headed throughout the piece. And while I went into this thinking that this would be largely without criticism, there were certain things that I personally thought could have been better handled or maybe worked on a little more or explored a little deeper. And uh, the biggest oversight being to me that not once was Bruce's intent to kill Joe Chill addressed. This is a pivotal scene in the film, as it happens to serve for the founding message that Logan touches upon again and again, that you have to learn from your mistakes, pick yourself up after you've fallen. But it isn't mentioned, not once. Perhaps this is a result of time constraints, but he does address a similar issue toward the end of the film, when Batman decides not to kill Roz, but doesn't save him either. I've personally talked to folks that were really not that keen on the idea that Bruce would be depicted in this way carry a gun with murderous intent, yet I thought it grounded him in reality. Most people, if they've ever been hurt at the hands of someone else, seem to want vengeance, an eye for an eye. And since this isn't addressed in the review, I'm only left to guess based on what he said about the scene with Ross toward the end of the film as to what he actually thought of it that it was probably as uncomfortable for him to watch as it was for several others. I thought he could have perhaps delved deeper into some of the other characters' roles in the story, which was also pointed out by fellow YouTube reviewer Mr. Fusion in a review he did of this a year ago. For example, the intricate plot threads, not just pertaining to the criminal element, which is deeply covered by Logan, but I also have loved to have heard his thoughts on Bruce's orchestrating taking back control of Wayne Enterprises, and his and Lucius Fox's foiling the executive Earl was played by Rucker Hauer as well as the destruction of Wayne Manor, which, though it seems to be very much a symbol for an ending of sorts, it too holds true to that aspect that here, Batman truly begins. Also, the editing in some areas could have been better, a point I can definitely sympathize with, as this has been a learning process for me as well, but it just seemed that there were areas that could have been better spliced. The most notable example is when he transitions into speaking about the sound of the piece, I don't know, perhaps giving Batman a love interest at all just seems a little unnecessary in this film. Several movies since this, I think, have copied the sound, and that's because it creates a sense of immediacy and intensity. I had to dial the video back a little bit because I didn't realize he'd actually gone on to a new topic. The frequency of his sentence seems to follow right into the next topic without ever changing, so I really didn't notice that he actually had moved on. Also, and this is just a personal nitpick, he applauds their efforts to successfully fool the viewer into believing Ken Watanabe's Ra's al Ghul is THE Ra's al Ghul of the piece, but I personally always found it hard to swallow that nobody saw Liam Neeson's little goatee and his interactions with Bruce and couldn't see this coming. Even as early as the preview imagery, I was always thinking, you know, he really looks more like Ra's al Ghul than Watanabe does. When it did play out that way, I thought it was very cleverly handled, as to most viewers, it would be quite the surprise. And from a storytelling point of view, I applaud how it was put into effect. 
but I don't think it was so cleverly done that no one could have picked up on it, as was the case personally. I also had to agree with a point noted by Mr. Fusion in his review of this, how certain screenshots were warped or slightly off. I have to agree that these can be quite the eyesore at times, to the point where on occasion I did find myself looking away from the screen, but then again that could also be because I'm looking at a small mobile screen, as that's my only means of going online. But while I did on occasion find myself losing focus on the visuals of the piece, never once did I actually lose any interest in what Logan was saying, which brings us back to one of his greatest strengths in this review. He doesn't just talk about the movie-going experience, sitting back, popping it in, and watching it. He delves deeply into the intricacies of the story. Early on in this review, he says, To make something everlasting and exceptional, you have to have reverence for the material and the character. In my opinion, Logan has this, and all criticisms aside, this review is definitely the proof. Just as Batman Begins is, it is without a doubt worth multiple viewings, as it can only serve to make you want to dig a little deeper, and really appreciate all the multi-facets that are in this grand spectrum of storytelling. And with that being all I have to say on it, I hope this video finds you well, and I'll catch you all later. Peace. Mr. Blues, we have received your transmission. Well done. However, it is now out of our hands, and we'll have to undergo strict analysis.